What's the creepiest glitch in the matrix thing that's ever happened to you? Story 1. Taking the trash out at night, a super remote area, so I know for a fact we're the only ones around here. Getting close to the road and I hear very clearly, help me, from a female voice. Even knowing there's such a slim chance of there being another living person around, I still feel like I should look around and check it out in case I wasn't just hearing things and someone actually needed help. Take about two steps in the direction I thought I heard it, and hear a giggle in the same exact voice. Turn around and walk promptly back up to the driveway, because F that. Anyone who actually needed help wouldn't be laughing. I don't think. When I was a child, my sister and I were walking home from the park and a man called, HELP! We found an open manhole and could hear the man calling for help, but we could not see him. I was nine and panicking and thought we should crawl in to help. My sister, Eleven, had the good instinct to get our parents. When we came back with them, the man was gone. As an adult, I can see the whole thing was a ploy. The manhole right next to the park. It makes complete sense, but it's still so creepy. So then, did you just go back inside and forget about it for the night? I guess going back inside is a good first step to take, but if I lived in the middle of nowhere and was fairly sure what I heard was a person outside my house in the middle of the night for seemingly no good reason, I would probably spend the rest of the night looking out the windows trying to determine if there was in fact a person, or just an animal, or I would get murdered because it is too shameful to call the cops for what turns out to be a toad or some crap. Story 2 I was working on my motorcycle, in a dirt lot, where I had crashed it trying to do a sick drift, breaking off the clutch lever and the gear shifter. I had brought a wrench set with me, and I was using one of them to take off a bolt where I put it down on the ground to finish unscrewing the bolt with my hand. Two minutes later, I went to pick it back up, and it was gone. I ran all around this dirt lot looking for it to no avail. Luckily, I had a spare in the car, fixed the bike, and drove back to my apartment to shower as I was filthy. I walked into my room, and sitting on my desk was the wrench. I was dumbfounded. This reminds me of when I was in dance as a little girl. I remember throwing my dance shoe over my shoulder as I was getting ready in my room. When I turned around to grab it, I couldn't find it anywhere. My mom and I had searched for 10 minutes before we decided to leave without the shoe, so we wouldn't be too late to practice. We found the slipper in my winter boot by the porch just as we were leaving, which was across the house from where I was when I tossed my slipper. I remember one time when I was late for school. I couldn't find my glasses so my mom helped me look for them. I was looking in the mirror right before I realized I didn't have them. My bus was leaving and I had to go without it. Then, as I was on my way and touched my face, I bumped into the glasses. I was wearing it. Now, I could believe that I forgot that I had put them on, but another person also not realizing and me not seeing in the mirror that it's literally right there? One eye is weaker than the other in my case, so unless I'm trying to read something that's far away, my eyesight isn't that much worse without glasses, so I don't necessarily feel the difference. Story 3 I once clocked out of work at 6 p.m., like I always did at the time, and began my hour-long train ride home. After I had found a seat, I went to sleep and woke up just before my station. From the station, it is a short bus journey, 10 to 15 minutes to reach home. During the entire journey, I didn't use my phone and didn't wear a watch, so I didn't really notice the time anywhere. When I reached home, my family surprised me with, You're home early. Everything alright? I look at the wall clock and it is about to be 6pm. I was too shocked to understand what happened. Checked other watches, cell phones, etc. and the time was absolutely right. A few days later, the admin emailed us the timesheets for the month. Times clocking in and out, and every single day for me was around the same 6pm. So it certainly wasn't me having left work earlier. To this date, I haven't figured out how I gained between 60 to 90 minutes that day. Story 4 my ex-wife and I were sleeping. There was a small sliver of light coming in through the window from a street light, so the room and bed were dimly visible. Our black Pomeranian was at the end of the bed asleep. I dreamt that I woke up, reached down to pet him, and he turned into a glossy black bivalve oyster thing that opened up to reveal rows of gleaming glass teeth. I woke up to my ex backpedaling up the bed over the pillows towards the wall. I asked, what's wrong? She said, what is that shiny black clam thing with the teeth? at the end of the bed. Where's the dog? We had the same nightmare at the same time. This still gives me a chill. Story 5 
I've told this story before and could go into a ton of detail, but here's the short version. I am 100% sure I vividly remember a dog that apparently doesn't exist. When I was 16, we lived on the other side of the province, and my uncle had this little Jack Russell named Crew. Crew went missing for several months and then turned up at a humane society over an hour away and we were all shocked this little dog had made it so far. Anyway, that was almost 20 years ago and the other day I was talking to my parents and was like, you know, whenever I hear about Jack Russell's I think about Crew and that stunt he pulled. And they had no idea what I was talking about. Insisted my uncle had never had such a dog. I must have dreamed it, etc. Honestly, anyone else who would have remembered this dog has been dead for a long time, and I don't even have any pictures of my uncle. I have absolutely no way to prove this dog existed, but I'm sure that he did. Here I am thinking I have no anecdote or story to tell on this post, and just reading through the comments for a bit of fun, and your comment made me remember. When we were in school, elementary, my sister and I would be dropped off the bus at different places. It was a logistics thing. I had practice we would take different buses. She would take one bus to my grandma's so that she wouldn't spend the afternoon by herself and I would take another one. This went on for like four or five years. Fast forward a few years later and I make a comment about how we've been riding buses since we were little and suddenly my mom has no recollection of either of us taking buses when we were younger, alone by ourselves. I mean, did we master teletransportation and somehow forget to keep doing it once we hit high school? I have many, perhaps too many, similar stories like this especially about my childhood. This is why I sometimes joke that my childhood is a farce and I don't remember what actually happened. One example though is a trip to an antique shop that I took with my mom when I was a child that apparently never happened. I'm from NYC, specifically the Bronx, and I remember my mom and I took the bus once to an antique shop in Queens. I even remember the way the antique shop looked and smelled. I remember getting a Mulan toy tea set that even came with a toy cricket in it. I mentioned this particular trip a few years ago to my mom and she flat out told me I have never been to an antique shop in Queens. Never even seen one in Queens. The wild thing too is that I remember that toy set, but don't remember whatever happened to it. Story 6. I was driving about 50 miles an hour and a car ran a stop sign on an on-ramp and pulled out right in front of me. I remember bracing for impact and then I was about 300 yards down the highway and I saw the car at the ramp in my rear view, just about to pull out. I was driving during a snowstorm when a police car started driving next to me with lights on, and no sirens. I looked at the officers, but they did not look at me. They had a weird look on their face. Something was off. They accelerated just a little to pass me and then completely disappeared. I drove maybe 15 minutes on the road without seeing them anywhere. They couldn't have gone really far. The road conditions were terrible. I was creeped out for a long time. Weird stuff like this has happened happened on both sides of my family. Happened to my grandma on a one-lane bridge. The next thing she knew, the oncoming truck was behind her, still traveling in the opposite direction, and she was just over the bridge. Happened before my dad was born. Happened to my grandpa on the other side. He was driving a camper on a family vacation. My mom was a child, asleep, and turned out to be without her seatbelt on. As they rounded a curve in a winding mountainous area, a large vehicle, a semi, came flying around the curve, half in my grandpa's lane. Next thing he knew, my grandpa's pickup truck and camper were resting safely on the shoulder, completely stopped. But without a jarring sensation of stopping suddenly, my mom slept through the whole thing. Without everyone surviving these two strange incidents, I would certainly not exist. I had something similar, but it was me who did something I shouldn't have. I was going home and was to be turning left ahead, crossing traffic. The light was flashing yellow, so it's a yield light and the road I was on was like a 45 mile per hour zone. So most people are going 50. There was a car coming, but since I was going about 30 to 35 myself, I was like, nah, I can make it. I started the turn and right as I started crossing their side, I glanced through my passenger window to make sure I had room still, but thought, oh crap, I don't. This is going to be bad. Fully expecting the car to nail my passenger side and either flip me or spin me. So like you, I braced for impact, which obviously is a bad thing to do because tensing up is part of the reason people get more injured than someone who's asleep or drunk. Then it felt like the time literally stopped for a few seconds. When it started again, I was through their side and on the beginning of the road I was turning into. I glanced in my rear view as time started again and the car I was expecting to hit me zoomed past, as if I was actually a few seconds ahead of him. But originally 
he was within what seemed like 10 feet before impact. I just said holy crap and thanked the universe for sparing me. I'm not religious in any traditional sense, even though I grew up in a Christian family, but I've had a few dangerously close encounters with death from my perspective, and I'm not sure how I'm still alive. Story 7 I had just pulled into the parking lot of where I worked and was walking towards the building. It was like 3 in the afternoon, broad daylight. All of a sudden I heard an ambulance's siren start sounding. Naturally I looked down the road to try and see the ambulance. I saw it approaching and decided to watch it for a bit. It was quickly getting closer and it was about to pass right by me. However, there was a large SUV waiting to turn out of the parking lot and onto the road, blocking a few meters of the road from my view. The ambulance passed behind the SUV, probably about 50 feet away from me at most, and I vividly remember the siren becoming completely silent in that instant. The ambulance had vanished entirely as it passed behind that SUV. I was so confused. The road did not have that many cars on it at the time, and it was broad daylight. I did a triple take and made sure that I didn't just miss it. I had a clear view of the road going both directions. There was no more ambulance to be seen. No more sirens either. I walked up and down the road trying to find it for a solid minute, but nope, it was gone. I was well rested, not on drugs, and I didn't have a history of hallucinations. It seems dismissible, but I was completely aware of what happened and I can't explain it to this day. What? I have a very similar story. Broad daylight, sitting at a stoplight to turn left under a highway bridge. In front of me and to the left is the turnaround lane for traffic coming from the other direction. I hear a police siren coming my way. I see a motorcycle cop with his lights flashing and siren on following the white SUV. The white SUV turns left in the turnaround lane with the policeman following about 20 feet behind. This is where it gets weird. Both the SUV and motorcycle cop are going roughly 25 miles per hour as the cop enters the turnaround lane his siren suddenly shuts completely off. The moment he passes behind a small concrete pillar he never comes out from the other side of the pillar. The SUV just continues on as if nothing happened and heads for a chicken express just up the street. I'm sitting there in disbelief, wondering how and why the cop came to a complete stop from going 25 miles per hour and his siren turned off at the same time, and the pillar would have only barely been able to cover him from front to back. When the light turned green, I went and looked behind the pillar expecting to see him somehow, but he wasn't there. The motorcycle cop got swallowed before my eyes into another dimension, and I think the white SUV did it somehow. I had a somewhat similar experience as a teenager. I was waiting for my mom to pick me up. I saw our car turn around the corner near where I was sitting, but the car just drove past me. I could tell it was our car, and I even saw my mom and sister inside. I focused really clearly on it all. It almost even seemed hyper real with the amount of detail and the odd feeling I had. The car drove past me and along the street, turning out of view. But the moment it disappeared, our car turned the corner right next to where I was, where I first saw the other car. This time it stopped. My sister was not inside, only my mom. It simply isn't possible for that other car to have existed. I was also well rested. I had never taken illegal drugs, etc., and I didn't have a history of hallucinations. I got such a bad vibe that as soon as I got home, I told my sister to never drive along that street ever. I still can't explain what happened. I have a somewhat similar story. This occurred in 2008. My ex and I had just gotten out of a movie, and it was 11.30 at night. I still remember the time to this day. We had to take a backcountry road to get home, which was left at this stoplight. In the left turn lane in front of us was a cop car. No one else was around. Around. We both turn left and follow down this two-lane road behind this cop car. The thing is, this car was an 80s or 90s era Crown Victoria. Now why this was weird was the fact that the local department switched to Dodge Charger. It was a big deal because people thought it was wasteful spending, and the cars before them were not Crown Victorias. I commented on the cop's car's appearance, and he made the comment that the car was probably an antique and that the station used it for parades or something. We go around the bend to a straightaway and the cop speeds up. He doesn't turn on his lights or anything. Then bam, pitch black. Nothing was there. My ex slammed the brakes thinking that the cop car had braked and for whatever reason the lights went out. We were both shocked. We both saw it and I was stunned. We crept the car forward and nothing was there. We tried to see if the car pulled off. Nope, the woods were thick and no hiding spots for the cop cars to pull you over. If the car had been on the edge, we would have seen it as we drove past. We ended up driving home, but seriously spooked. 
The next day, we agreed to go back. The road was busier, but when you drove through the spot, there was nowhere for the car to go. The pine trees were growing too close together for any kind of space for a car to fit, and they were very close to the edge of the road. It's been one of those things that I've tried debunking over and over. In fact, I told the story to my now husband, and he tried to say that maybe the cop pulled off behind a thicket, or there was a logging road I couldn't see. One time, we happened to drive through the area, and I showed him the spot. He couldn't debunk it and tried to claim it was in a different area, and I misremembered. The only problem is that the road was like that for several miles in either direction, and there were no other road intersections until you came upon a town. Still freaks me out to this day. Story 8 my friend Sarah was in a nightclub, drunk off her face, when she got an overwhelming urge to tell a total stranger that her leg hurts. Edit. It didn't. All a bit strange, she ignores it, but it doesn't stop, so she walks up to this guy and says, I know this is crazy, but I have a huge urge to tell you that my leg hurts. I know that's crazy again. Sorry. But he bursts into tears. Turns out his dad had just died and they made a pact before that. If there was an afterlife, he would get a message to him saying a totally random phrase, so there could be no mistakes, which they decided was, I've hurt my leg. I love this story. It reminded me of a glitch when I was at a perfect level of messed up. I was partying at someone's rooftop Airbnb after the bar, and I had the perfect buzz going on. I met a guy who looked oddly familiar, but I couldn't place him. I introduced myself and told him he looked familiar, and he said he didn't recognize me. He was here on business and lived 5,000 kilometers away. A picture of a small girl and a baby came into my head, almost like a memory. I said, you have a daughter around five, right? And a newborn? And then I blurted out, well, your grandpa is your newborn reincarnated. He responded with, what? I do have a five-year-old and my grandpa just passed away, and we are planning on naming our baby after him. The baby is expected to be born any day now. He was shocked. I was shocked too. Where did that come from? I felt as though I knew his entire life, his relationships with his wife and his parents, how he felt about his job, things only close family and friends would know. He avoided me after that. I don't blame him. Apparently, I have psychic powers when I get the perfect level of messed up. I have yet to experience anything like that again. This gave me chills. I have two similarish stories I've never been able to explain. The first, I was seven years old and having a sleepover at a friend's house. Her nanny was reading us a bedtime story and out of nowhere I suddenly panicked and told them I think my cat just died. Lo and behold, when I got picked up from her house the next morning, my parents broke the news that my cat had been hit by a car and died the night before. Jump to 15 years later and I'm having breakfast with a friend down the road from my house after staying over her place the night before. Midway through saying something, I suddenly felt overcome with grief, sadness, and something, and told her I had to leave because I had a feeling my dad had just died. On the drive home, my mom called me and simply said, You should come home right now. I knew before it had even happened. I'll never understand how, unless I am just the beneficiary of unchecked confirmation bias. Story 9 I have a good one. I was about 12 years old and woke up in the middle of the night needing to take a leak. I walked across the hall to the little bathroom, hit the lights, and was about to reach for the toilet when I glanced up and saw a face in the mirror. It was not my face. It was as if someone was on the other side, standing to the right with their face right next to the glass, staring at me. I only saw it for the briefest moment, but it is seared into my brain. I screamed and ran out of there to find my dad. Of course, my dad investigated, then calmed me down or tried to. Eventually, we had a prayer session because I was so freaked out. Eventually, I must have gone back to sleep. Fast forward to my 30s, I'd forgotten all about the event. One night, while visiting my dad quietly brings it up. Remember that one time you saw a face in the mirror? It suddenly came back to me in a rush of memory, sending a chill down my spine. Yeah, I remember. Well, he said, I sometimes think about that night. He looked down at the floor with a serious expression. I saw it too. He went on to describe exactly what I'd seen. We have no idea what that was. Apparently, when he investigated, he saw it and had a freakout of his own. Apparently, the prayer session was as much for his own nerves as mine. 
I respect him for keeping that tidbit from me until my 30s, but I kind of wish he'd never told me. My dad was in the army, and we lived in Germany when I was younger. The house we lived in had all kinds of unexplained stuff going on. My little brother, who was 7 or 9 at the time, woke up screaming bloody murder, waking the whole house. He says he saw a shadowy figure with chains at the foot of his bed, and describes the feeling he got from it as pure hatred. My dad bursts into the room, turns on the light, and spends the next hour or so comforting my brother. Years later, while we're all having a few drinks and talking about that house, the story gets brought up. My dad then admits that, in that second before he turned on the light, he saw the exact same thing. He said he also felt that hate feeling too. Something bad either happened in that house or lived there, and for two years we got to share it with something. This reminds me of a dream that messed me up for a while. About a year or so ago, I woke up one morning and headed to the shower to get ready for work. When I stepped into the bathroom, the shower curtain was hanging off the bar as most of the clips somehow ended up on the floor. I spent a few seconds picking them up, and when I bent up, I looked straight into the mirror. It was my body, but the face looked like a pig's face, but without any eyes, just teeth and a snout. It made a horrible squealing noise, then reached through the mirror and grabbed me. I woke up in a jolt, terrified. I have nightmares pretty often, but I was really unsettled by it. So much so that when I went to the bathroom, I took special care to not look into the mirror, even though I was awake. After I used the bathroom, I looked at the clock on my stove and realized I had more time to sleep. So I decided to take a sip of water before laying back down. As I was taking a sip, I still felt extremely unsettled and was afraid I was still in a nightmare. To prove I was awake, I pinched myself and felt the pain. Then I bit my lip hard and felt even more pain. Convinced that I really was awake, I put the water bottle back in the fridge and closed the door. Right behind the door was the pig-faced creature again with its horrible squeal grabbing me by the neck. I woke up for real that time, but that dream messed me up for months. I'm 36, and I had a hard time walking around my apartment at night, especially after waking up. I had never been so trolled by my own brain before. Story 10 I shared this a few years ago when this question was asked last time, and didn't really realize how glitchy in the matrix it was until people started commenting. In college, I took a hard news slash soft news journalism class where one of the assignments was to write an obituary for one of my grandparents. The professor told us to write it on a deceased grandparent, but if all of our grandparents were still alive, we had to choose one. In my case, all of my grandparents were alive. I procrastinated actually doing the assignment until the night before it was due because it seemed like a morbid assignment, especially once all of my grandparents were still alive. Scramming for an easy grandparent to write about, I gave my mom a call and asked her for some basic biographical information about my maternal grandfather. As we were talking about my grandpa's career, my mom couldn't recall the name of one of the companies he worked at. She lectured me about waiting until the last minute to write the assignment because it was late. It was 10.30 p.m. in my grandpa's time. However, she she said that she would give him a call to see if he was still awake and be able to answer that question once my assignment was due the following morning. When my mom called my grandpa, my grandma answered the phone in a panic. My grandma frantically explained that the paramedics had just arrived and were performing CPR on my grandpa because he had stopped breathing and lost consciousness. My mom was able to stay on the phone with my grandma until they took my grandpa to the hospital where he was declared dead. At the time, my mom and I had been talking on the phone about my grandpa's obituary. He was dying. His death was entirely unexpected, although he was in his 80s. He was the healthiest of my grandparents at the time. We ended up using the obituary I wrote for that writing assignment as his actual obituary. It still freaks me out when I think about the timing. Freaky. Reminds me a bit of this time when I was a kid. I had this little joke novelty thing I'd gotten at a magic shop while on vacation. This was actually so long ago, I forget exactly what the thing was supposed to resemble. But it was something you were supposed to open, and it had this plastic thing inside suspended on a rubber band. You were supposed to wind this thing up and close it. You hand it to your victim, sucker friend, they open it, which releases the tension, allowing the plastic thing to spin around, rattling loudly against the plastic case and vibrating in their hand, scaring the crap out of them. Anyway, I got all of my relatives with this thing because I was a funny little 10-year-old kid. My great aunt and uncle were visiting and staying at my grandparents' house. I had the thought to try this trick on my great aunt, but something stopped me. It didn't feel right, and I very clearly had the thought, I don't want to give her a heart attack. No idea why. She was a bit older, but so were my grandparents who I already tricked. Well, very shortly after they returned home, I got the news that my great aunt had had a heart attack 
attack and passed away. Seemed like a spooky coincidence, so that one's always stuck with me. I have something like this too, though not identical. I was a freshman in college. I remember I was in a great mood and had a great day. I was watching American Idol that evening with some other girls on my floor when suddenly I felt my heart breaking. Just a bone-deep sadness that came out of nowhere. I tried to ignore it, but after 20 minutes I was almost crying. I excused myself to the lobby and called my mom's cell phone. She answered, actually sounding normal, and when I responded, I said, Uncle Blank killed himself, didn't he? She broke down crying and sobbing and said she had gotten a phone call and was meeting the coroner and emergency workers at my uncle's apartment so that she could identify the body. He had intentionally OD'd. Though I knew he lived a rough lifestyle, neither one of us had any reason to believe he was suicidal. When I had dialed her number, I had planned on just asking if everything was alright. I have no idea where those words or that idea came from. She sounded like her normal self when she answered. I just knew he was dead and knew it was suicide. I had a similar thing happen to me, but I was only 8 years old, so my memory might not be perfect. But I was staying over at a friend's house one night and had this terrible feeling of dread come over me that I couldn't explain. So I began praying over my family members because I grew up religious, but I forgot about one of my uncles before falling asleep. The next morning my mother called and explained to me that my uncle had overdosed and died, the same one who I had forgotten to pray for. Story 11 I had a very important document that I only ever kept in one place. I kept it in the top drawer of a small filing cabinet. I never moved it and would always see it in that drawer whenever I opened it for whatever reason. The day came that I needed it now, and I didn't sweat it because I knew exactly where it was. Well, I would be damned if it wasn't there. Cue a panic attack. I tore that filing cabinet up. I removed everything and spread it out. Flipped papers over, dug through envelopes, shook everything out, and shined a flashlight all through the emptied cabinet in case it was somehow stuck to the sides. I mean, it was not there. I can assure you no one took it, or was messing with me. I was so frustrated I even looked through other parts of my house but I knew it wouldn't be in any of those places and it wasn't. I was intermittently going back to that dumb filing cabinet. No luck. Super irritated, I searched the rest of the house again and on my way back downstairs where my filing cabinet was, I called out in frustration, Okay, bring it back. I don't know who who I thought I was talking to because I was alone, but you guessed it, I found it in the top drawer of my filing cabinet where it should have been in the first place. I was both relieved and totally freaked out. On numerous occasions I've done something similar where I can't find something even after looking for a long time in the place where it should be. I usually say something like, I don't mind that you borrowed it but I need it back now, please put it in the next place I look. Oddly, this works more often than not. I don't think it's anything supernatural but I don't mind hedging my my bets either. Most likely it's the act of pausing and taking my mind off the search for a moment that does the trick. Story 12 so this has always bothered me. I was 13 years old at the time and my dad was a coal miner. He worked the third shift, known as the Hoot Owl Shift, which was midnight to noon. As such, he got home around 2pm and slept till around 9, got up, had dinner with us and left for work. My dad was always pretty gruff and constantly yelled at us if my younger brother or I made too much noise and woke him up after getting home from somewhere, which as an adult now I completely understand. So one day I did something to wake him up. I forget what. Anyway, he called me back to the bedroom, and I was expecting to get a dressing down, but he just looked at me and said, it's okay, come over here and give me a hug. What 13 year old boy wants to hug their dad? I kind of squirmed a bit, and he followed up with, what if something happened to me, and just laid there all grizzled and tired? I didn't hug him. That night, there was an accident in the mine. He saved everyone on his crew, including the one person he went back in for. His was the only death, and I'm convinced he knew it was going to happen. I'll never forget his eyes that day. If someone asks you for a hug, give it to them. I love you, Dad. My grandfather was a railroad worker. He and my grandmother lived within a close walk of the rail yard. My grandmother said one day that he said she should not leave his dinner out like she did every night. He walked to the end of their sidewalk, then stopped and took a long look at her. She says it felt like he was truly taking her in, looked her head to toe. He dropped dead less than an hour later at work, stood up to throw away an orange peel and just fell over dead before he hit the ground. My grandmother is convinced he knew that would be the last time he saw her. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you would like to share with us, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again and see you next time.